Hello, and welcome to the part two of the Zodiac introduction to WebDAO. In part one, we showed you how to get your computer set up to work with WebDAO, and in this part, we're going to go over how to set up your iPad to work with WebDAO. There are a few places where you need to set up WebDAO. One of them is in Goodreader, and the other three are Numbers, Keynote, and Pages. Numbers, Keynote, and Pages all work identically, and the same steps that you use to set up Pages, you can use to set up Numbers or Keynote, so I'm just going to be demonstrating everything within Pages. First thing you need to do is go ahead and open up Pages. Now you can see we have a plus button at the top left hand side of the screen. We're going to touch that. And we're going to select WebDAV from the drop down list. Now if this comes up and shows you a couple of folders, then WebDAV is already set up and you don't need this video. Uh, we set them up before we handed them out. So in the case that you are ever signed out, you'll need this video to know how to sign back in. But if you don't sign out, you'll stay signed in, which is a handy feature. It's asking for some information here. The server address is HTTPS. Don't forget the S. It won't work without it. Colon, front slash, front slash, M dot Zodiac Pool Systems. Dot com. The username is the same username you use to log into your computer. So it's your first name, dot last name, and your password is the same as your computer password. Now your password is case sensitive. So if you have capital letters in your computer password, make sure you also have capital letters here. Then we touch sign in. This is going to contact the server and it's going to authenticate your credentials. And now you can see the two folders. Once again, if when you first signed in you saw these two folders, it means WebDAV is already set up. Now you can navigate to your users folder here. We'll touch mine. And you can see here's a listing of my documents that I copied over from my computer. And then we can use these arrows to go back. And we can even touch cancel here and it will save the web dev information and come right back to the folders. The only thing we can't do is we can't touch sign out. And if we touch sign out, we'll have to enter in the information again. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel and back out of this in the interest of time. Now, we open up Goodreader. This is the other place we need to set up web dev. And this is the this is the Goodreader homepage. Um, you can see we have a number of tabs over here, and we want to touch Connect to Servers. And down here we have un, next to the Connect to Servers tab. Once it's open, we have a little button that says Add. We want to touch that. We're going to select any web dev server, and then we're going to fill in the same information that we filled in before with the addition of a readable title. Now this readable title is going to be what is what will what will refer to this um, server by. So I'm going to call it Zodiac Mobile. We'll see that name again in a second. Come down here to URL address. Once again it's https colon front slash front slash m dot zodiac pool systems Dot com. The user is your last first name dot last name. And the password is your computer password. Once again, it is case sensitive, so if you have capitals in your password, you'll need to have capitals here. The domain is left blank, and we touch the blue add at the top right. Now you see the name we referenced earlier, Zodiac Mobile. If we touch the little arrow over here, it'll show us some information about the server. Touch cancel here. And then if we touch on the server itself, it will access the server and allow us to see the files that are within it. We see the same files that we saw from Goodreader, or from Pages. We can touch on the little arrow in M users to enter that folder. We can touch on the little arrow in My Users folder. And now we have the same documentation we saw earlier. I'm actually going to back up a little bit. You can see we have a close button up here and we have a little back arrow. So I'm going to back up to right here and I'm going to touch on the name part of this and I'm going to highlight it green. And the reason I'm going to do that is if you see down at the bottom we now have a sync button. I'm going to touch that 
And what this is going to do is it's going to download my entire users folder to local storage on the iPad, which means any document I have in my local users or my users folder is going to be stored locally on the iPad and I'm going to have access to it whether I have internet or not. So I can get a lot of technical information that I use on a daily basis pre-staged and ready for me when I need it. Now you see it's asking me where to save it and I'm going to select download here and synchronize to just put it right at the right at the root and you can see the folder has now shown up but there's out, there's nothing in it yet. It's come up and it's asking us some questions and asking us for some settings. There's one that I'm going to change here and it's called delete remote files. Now what this does is when I delete a file here on my iPad and I sync it with the server, it will also delete it on the server. So it will keep my iPad and the server in sync with each other and it will keep them both organized. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on because I want that. And I'm going to touch the little blue sync button. Now what this is going to do is it's going to go off and it's going to synchronize all of my files um, from the server here to the iPad like I had described earlier. And I'm actually going to cancel this a little ways through because I'm not going to wait for the entire sync. And I'm going to close the little warning that says I synced it. Synced it. And you can see I have the James.Harper folder here. It shows you how big it is and it has a little green button with two arrows. When I touch that, it restarts the sync. So whenever I want to copy over data from the server to the iPad, that button's what I use. Now it's also worth mentioning that this can copy a large amount of data very quickly and it's a really fast way to use up your data. So whenever you do sync a large amount of data with the server, like you're transferring a bunch of new documents to the iPad, or your folder gets deleted and you want to re-download it from the server, make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi to do that. That has been the iPad side of the web dev setup, and I hope you enjoyed it.